They're going to close session. No. <laughs> That's fine. Violated brother. That's good. <laughs> okay. Join the other boards and commissions and serve on to do that. Got squared away? Yes. Morning. Morning. That's our that's our saving grace. Yeah. What about this accounting error? Reporting error from Anthony. Yeah. How do they do that? Why is it always trying to Talk about that change in the yeah. language. There needs to be a change. There needs to be. Can you do that or what? Because of the last night, the public night occurred. Probably consultation with your, with your staff. You have, don't you have to consult with your. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm just thinking also, don't you have to consult with. But it's common courtesy. Okay, so what do you want to know? Good seat. What was your rate of return from uh, uh, for uh, period ending June 30th? This is unofficial. Right. We're going to be presenting it next quarter. Probably gross. Yeah, we're on the low end. That's what we're like. You're lower than us. Hey, but I mean, how are you? Justin, you gave the gavel because it had to come down to the meat right here. I want to buy the dish. I want to buy the dish. I want to buy the dish. I want to buy and to get more and exposure to the international market because they thought that like I said, I said, we, uh, we achieved our soon to be returning our application. If, if okay, people were well, yeah. asked, do you want exactly. a Republican <laughs> or a Democrat? Yeah. No, so, by the way, we're changing that, but we're not going to see the results of the change versus the current. Oh, he's going to be more than that. 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 He's I know, and that's in there, so they're gonna. Oh, okay. Curious how they're gonna spend that. And we'll go to close session and come yeah, back we'll and do public comment when we come back. Last year. Okay. So, ending. So you ready for the big move?
Since it's after 9 o'clock, let's go ahead and get started. Well, that's a good mic. Oh, yeah. You like that? Yeah. Nothing but the best for well, our yeah. county supervisors. Yeah. Way better than ours, man. Good, good well, acu acoustics in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are great I feel like saying, more. let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Yes. All right, I want to have call the meeting to order. <laughs> Let's do a pledge of allegiance, Mr. Worley. Will you lead us in the pledge of allegiance? You better have to turn off the floor. Ready? Salute. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's amazing what good acoustics can do for a Fresno County supervisor. Oh, yeah. Especially one that can project their voice <laughs> without <laughs> the microphone. Uh, roll call, please. Director Borges. Direc Director Crocker. Here. Director Magsig. Here. Director Mendez. Here. Director Pacheco. Here. Director Vanderpool. Present. Director Wardley. Present. Next is approval of agenda. I would move for approval, Mr. Chair. Second. Chair. Get a motion and a second. All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 And do we need a motion to go into closed session? That's the next. No, so. no motion is necessary. Okay, we'll go to closed session then. Acoustics are good either way. <laughs> Put it into fixed income strategies. <laughs> CDs are great. Commodities. All commodities. <laughs> hey, our, our commodities did well last year. Yeah, so did ours, but that's like the first time in seven years. First time in seven years, yeah. Our retirement administrator came from Orange County, so he, he oh, paid he a lot to do some derivatives. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It works for a while. What happened to our players? They found the restroom, I think. Did they? I thought it, they just found your office. Yeah. Maybe they're taking a nap. Yeah, and one of my supervisors is in there, too. So um, the heater is down. Aren't you vice chair now, Carolyn? Uh, don't remind me. You or is it me? Going. Go ahead and keep it going. Keep what going? Keep it going. There, there. Here's Buddy. I'm not in Wake up in a hurry. cat nap. What's that? <laughs> Had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it happens. And those are luxurious, too. <laughs> We're very frugal. <laughs> okay, so we're back in session. There's nothing to report, right? Correct. So now we'll move to item six, which is public comment on anything not on the agenda. Hearing none, we'll move to item seven, approval of the minutes. Motion approved. Got a motion by Steve? I'll second it. I'll second. All in favor, so I say an aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Now we got director questions and announcements. Are there any? Hearing none, we'll move to receive an update on auditor controller, Mr. Sun.
Can you step, uh, pull that microphone over a little bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be presenting the cash flow projections uh, for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 17 18. Okay, so we started the fourth quarter with cash of about $4 million. And you can see the cash going up and down throughout the quarter. Though we did end up better than we started and ended up with around $7 million in cash. And a lot of that's due to the timing of cash inflows and outflows. Okay, taking a look at the next graph here, this is the estimated cash flows for the beginning of fiscal year 1819 through the end of the calendar year. So we're starting with around seven mil seven million dollars in cash and we're looking at a trend that's going upward and we should end up with around twelve million dollars in cash. Any questions on that? What no questions? No questions. So we'll move to item 10 then. And you're still on. Okay, item 10, I will be presenting the estimated financials through June 30th, 2018. Okay, so this is the estimated statement of, uh, of net position. And I'll just go through, <clears throat> go through down the statement here. So our current assets, we have cash of $6.5 million and due from other governmental units of 300K for total current assets of 6.9 million. We have non-current assets of other receivables at $970,000 and for total assets of 7.8 million here. And our, our current liabilities, we have uh, accounts payable of 3.2 million unearned member contributions of 2.5 million and unpaid claims of 900,000. We have uh, non-current liabilities of 9.8 uh, million and that's the long-term loans from County of Fresno and County of Tulare there and interest payable on those loans of 207,000 to date. So our total uh, liabilities is 16.6 .6 million. Uh, question. Um, yes. So we show interest of 207,000, but the number below that of non-current total liabilities is the same number as just the uh, capital. Oh, um, I didn't catch that. Okay, that should be, so about 10.1. Oh, okay. So, uh, that's one, okay. so that should be uh, corrected there. So our total liability is 16.6, .6, so that should be up a little bit. Okay, or so our total net, that deficit at that point is uh, 8.7. And so it's up by about 2.4 from the last quarter that was reported there. Okay, any questions on uh, the net position statement? No questions. Okay, moving on. This here, uh, you guys can barely see it, uh, but this is uh, the actuals versus budgeted for the fourth quarter of our disbursements. So we have our fixed disbursements. I can't even look at it here, I'm gonna look at my paper. Okay, our fixed disbursements uh, total 2.5 uh, million as opposed to the 1.9 million that was budgeted for the fourth quarter. Our claims disbursements were 17 million dollars and that's in line with what was budgeted at 17.8. We have our premium disbursements of 10.5 million versus the budgeted 8.9 million. And so our total disbursements for the fourth quarter were $30 million and the budget was 28 million. And so we went over by 5% there. Now for the year in total, the disbursements were $108 million uh, versus the budgeted 98 million. And so in total, we went over by 11% 11, uh, 11 there. Okay. Any questions on that? <coughs> no questions. Okay. And this next one here is a breakdown of the administrative costs for the fourth quarter 
the total costs uh, were $380,000. And I'll just highlight some line items here for administration. Accounting, uh, 43,000. Uh, human resources, 62,000. Audit fees, 22. Uh, legal, uh, $220,000. Uh, for the total year, the administrative cost totaled one point one million. So legal fees. Any questions? No questions. Okay. All right, moving on to the last one here. This is the statement of cash flows per month, and each column there represents uh, the cash flows. Uh, for each of the individual months in the fiscal year 17-18. Now for the fourth quarter, so we started off the uh, the fourth quarter with 4.7 million in April. And we ended up as of June 30th at 6.5 million. And that of course ties to the statement of net position. Questions there? Yeah, go ahead. You know, I do have one question regarding just the bank service fees, um, even though for the amount of money that's flowing through there, 13000 doesn't sound like a whole lot. But again, uh, those fees, are we asking the banks to do anything out of the ordinary? Or is everything being done electronically and we're not spending a lot of uh, other staff time for them to house the money? Um, it's being done you know, on, on their end. It, it's about a little over $1,000 uh, per, per, per month for bank fees there. But again, is it just a hosting? Is, is that basically just a hosting fee? Or are we, are we actually speaking to representatives of the bank on a regular basis? Um, on my end, um, I have not spoken to any, any representatives. Yeah, it's just uh, having our cash with Chase Bank and just running the reports on there. Um, I'm not aware of any communication with representatives on my end. There may be some with our Treasury Department that may be speaking with representatives. Okay, this is something I'm going to watch. But, uh, you know, obviously when we're dealing with the tens of millions of dollars that are flowing through there, typically banks would be excited about that. And as long as we're not spending a lot of their time, maybe we should have no fees. Just just a thought. But that's something I'm going to watch. So uh, at some point I might follow up with you directly and maybe have a conversation with Chase to see if we can get a better deal on those fees. Sounds good. Or shop banks. What's that? Or shop banks. Or shop banks, maybe. Any other questions? <clears throat> and that was it for the financials. Yeah, go ahead. Just a quick question on the couple slides past. There was an 11 point differential between the budgeted and the actual. Is that what you, you, you mentioned? Yes. Can you just, just briefly describe that process? Are there just enough variables that it's just too difficult uh, to keep it within that or what explained the 11 differential um, that I would have to defer that to the staff on there um, I, I can present the numbers as is but in terms of the operations of why it's of why we're not on budget I would have to defer to the operations staff for that one would this be an appropriate time to have that someone explain that just briefly Paul Nerland, uh, direct, uh, SJVI director, just looking at, I, I think just to clarify, are you on the uh, report uh, line item three where there's an 11% variance at Trementi and Associates? Yes, this would be. Yes. To clarify. Okay. okay. If that's the line item you're speaking to, and, and we'd have to confirm this with our staff, that nine times out of ten, that is a, uh, a timing <coughs> issue of when the expenses hit. Uh, more than anything else, but I can a ask our team if there's anything different. That's typically, when these reports are written, um, cash could be in the bank that has not been paid, so it so it's more of a time issue than a budget issue. More often than not, that is the case when we look at this. We were chuckling about uh, Andreas was, Vanderpool actually asked that same question, but he asked it under his breath. Okay. I asked it to Buddy because I expected Buddy to know, and then you know you had to ask the real experts. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to item eleven. <coughs> Larry? Hey, me. 
Good morning, board. Larry Gomez, County of Fresno. Um, this item is before you today. Uh, there was a need to reschedule the December SJBA board meeting that's uh, scheduled to be held here in Tulare County um, due to a conflict and uh, scheduling conflict. The, we had hoped to have the dates uh, finalized for you to approve today, but we are looking at December 13th, which is a Thursday, or December 14th. Um, we have reached out to uh, several of you already to get your schedules, but um, have not uh, been able to confirm uh, which of those two days. So we will bring that back to you when we can finalize that for you. Um, but I also have another update as well. Um, yesterday afternoon, I received, we received an email uh, regarding the San Joaquin Valley Regional Association of California Counties. They have their fall conference, which this fall is scheduled for October 24th through the 26th. Um, there is an SJBA board meeting on Friday the 26th of October. So we wanted to get your input on, I'm not sure which of the directors here plan on attending that, and if we need to look at possibly rescheduling the October SJBA board meeting as well. We just do it at the conference? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it this year? Where are we going? Stockton. 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 Well, actually, it, complete, yeah, it completes on Thursday, doesn't it? Is, I think, I think it's, isn't it just Wednesday, Thursday? Normally, Friday morning is the Friday is a business meeting. meeting. I mean, okay. But it, but we could do it Friday morning there, up there. Up there? Yeah. Staff would love that, I think. Stockton? Stockton? Beautiful downtown Stockton. Oh, they said no. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see. I'm reading their minds. They said no. No. <laughs> I heard there's a lot of cats there, so Rhonda's in. <laughs> what, what's the scheduling conflict with the seven? Uh, you know, I'd have to go back and look. Someone was not a... Was it Cal Pelra conference? That's For right. me? The Cal Pelra conference is that. that that's that's are you going to Cal Pelra, Pelra conference? No. Are you going to Cal Pelra? Maybe. Are you? Okay. <laughs> well, I know December 14th, that's t that we've got a SJVWIA meeting. Yeah, it's a water. Yeah. yeah. So there, there would be a conflict on yeah, December so the 13th. 14th. Would work for me. You really yeah. only have the 13th. Yeah. So I know I'm there totally was free. the only issue was whether or not this room was available. Yeah. But if this room isn't available, we have other rooms. Yeah, this room uh, was not available on the 13th, as well as the uh, TCERA. Um, we could. We can uh, find a, a location. A over <laughs> HR. Our HRD, we would not have the microphones, um, um, and we would tape record the meeting we'd have to find a way to do that but would you want to have another meeting in fresno yeah we, can we do might it be in able fresno. to find some space okay, that's that's works as well i mean yeah, yeah. and then we can let you check on, on paul the larry check. meetings next time yeah yeah we can. Then we, i mean well, then we can turn so, around and do two meetings in a row until larry so we have not checked availability of facilities in Fresno, but we can do that. Uh, well, it sounds like we need to take care of both meetings because that is a problem on the 26th. Then. Yeah. So yeah. probably need to try to schedule both meetings, reschedule them. <clears throat> this might be a question of council. Uh, can, can, can the board give broad direction today to staff to work with both calendars and facilities to come back and then post those meetings so we don't have to do it on the fly today? Yes, they can. So if your board would like to do that, we yeah. can work with you and our staff and, and right. broad discretion. Yeah, let's do that. Limited. Stocked in it is. No. I'm unlimited. <laughs> we get phone calls. Popular. We good on that one? I don't know if we're good, but I think we're done. We're done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was an expression. <laughs> so we'll move to item 12. Rhonda Schustrom, the SJBIA. This is a request. Um, that the board approve and authorize um, staff to submit the 2018 multi-county biannual notice to the Fair Political Practices Commission, indicating that we have no amendment um, that is required at this time. This is a compliance issue. And in our description on the agenda item, you can see we staff have uh, answered the requested information. Um, from the FPPC guidelines. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, so we're saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carried. So we'll move to item 13 and Hollis. Hi, good morning. Hollis McGill, Human Resources Manager. Item 13 is requesting the president to execute the third amendment with the County of Fresno for the cash advances. This was approved at the County of Fresno board meeting on August 7th, and it mirrors the County of Tulare's agreement. 
so moved. Yep. Got a motion. Second. Second. Any dis public discussion? All in favor, so we're saying aye. Aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? Hearing none, we'll move to item 14. And that's Borden. There you go. There we go. You're up right. for a while. Uh, Borden Darm with Keenan and Associates. Um, item 14 is a, a request for signatures uh, that were not executed last year by the SJVIA due to not receiving them uh, for the Anthem HMO, which impacted three entities, County of Fresno, uh, the, I believe it was City of Ceres, and the one other city. What do you call it? Waterford. City of Waterford. Um, those were not given. Uh, to, well, either the consultant, the prior consultant had them and didn't execute them, or uh, uh, we just never received them. The reason this issue comes up now is uh, Keenan requested from Anthem the year end accounting for 2017 on the HMO. Uh, now, you know, we discontinued it as of uh, 1 1 18 this year, uh, but still, we're due a year end accounting. There will be a final accounting on the HMO. But Anthem uh, needs to allow more time for all the claims to run out. Most likely, most of them have, but we will look at a final accounting next year. Um, in the interim, I thought it was appropriate to request the 2017 year in accounting to see how that year ended. And um, they cannot provide us with that year in accounting until the signatures are obtained. So that's why the request comes before you today. Cool. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Any public comment? Hearing none, all in favor, so we're saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carried. It moves us to item 15. Um, item 15 uh, was a request from the board to receive uh, an update as to how Empirics has done through the first uh, six months. Uh, the report is in two parts. The utilization <coughs> data usually takes 90 to 120 days to close. So the report from a utilization perspective is only based off the first quarter of 2018. However, more of the experience data uh, that's available, that's through June of this year as well too. Um, from a highlight perspective, I, um, I won't go through everything, but um, uh, our, one of the big concerns is uh, the specialty drugs. They're at 27 percent, and based off of some of the more intricate data that I was that I looked at, uh, it appears that it's going up towards uh, into the 30s and could potentially go even higher. So uh, we'll be coming back to the board with recommendations and so forth relative to possibilities of, on handling those uh, prescription drugs. Very specifically, if you recall, this board was very concerned about not impacting membership too much as we transition over. Well, we've transitioned over now, and so some of the edits that we have in place with how the plan is administered uh, should be reviewed uh, as we move forward since everybody's kind of settled. We're still very sensitive to those that are on current medications and so forth, but moving forward, uh, uh, we'll be meeting with Empirix after we have the data from the second quarter, which should be in line with hopefully when we set the when we uh, have the October board meeting, but we'll come back with some recommendations relative uh, to that. Um, from a performance guarantee perspective, uh, so far it's projected that a 1.1 million dollar savings was had on the clinical side, and that is predominantly and uh, there's some examples in the report relative to. You know, sometimes our providers don't necessarily look at the price tag of what they're prescribing. And uh, I've been very impressed with the alerts that we've been receiving relative to, hey, the doctor prescribed this drug. It had a price tag of 60000 or whatever, and you, and you can read in the report relative <coughs> to some of those examples. But um, uh, they, they worked, and sometimes the generic was, was the first step. Um, predominantly, there are three uh, clinical programs that we're looking at. One is prior authorization for medication. Uh, two is quantity limits. And the third one is 
Uh, Indeed. Our authorization finally, oh, um, step therapy, thank you. Um, so those are the areas that are predominantly looked at and we wanna make sure that we have compliance relative to it. I believe early on uh, this year, we, we did have a few hiccups here and there and we had some member outreach issues, but I believe overall the plan is running much better. The, if you recall when um, um, Empirics was put in place, there was a performance guarantee on, this, on the clinical standards of 1,850,000, which was the floor, and 2,250,000, which was the ceiling, and a lot of it was based on what controls and edits we put in place. In my discussion, and based off of what was saved so far at the 1.1, Empirics feels very confident not only that they will achieve the floor, but also the ceiling uh, for this plan year. So we still have three quarters to report relative to that. Um, and we'll keep you abreast relative to that. Uh, the other request that was made and is not really included in this report, you have the data, but we want what uh, we're gonna come back in October is show you the year over year. So from 2017 to 2018 through June of both years, uh, what the differences are um, relative to performance. Uh, we are paying more for claims. However, we're also seeing greater utilization by membership and specifically greater utilization in specialty drugs. And that's why we've got to get a hold of that and do our best to, to control those as well too. Because we saw um, just on a preliminary basis, we don't have everything back, but, but I can share you, we had a 47% increase in specialty drug usage uh, for one county um, for the first, over the first seven months of this year. and. Um, a 15% increase in cost as well too, predominantly due to the specialty drugs. So that's the part that we gotta get under control. Sure. Is, there, is there a particular drug? I'm just thinking about advertising. I know people, will adver there'll be advertising on television, you need this, and then if people go into the doctor and say, I want that, um, that and that's oftentimes a, that's gonna be a high price drug. That's a big issue. At, you know, th 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 those advertisements always conclude with, Ask your doctor if this prescription is right for you. And it's effective. And it, you know, here, here's where things have changed. It used to be the advertisement for prescription drugs. Those drugs that were advertised were the high cost drugs in kind of the 200 to $500 range. <laughs> now it's those drugs that are advertised are typically in the two to 5,000 and uh, way above. Those are the ones that are being advertised now and um, you know a lot of it it's being it, effective it is and it, it's uh, in 2010 when the ACA came out um, uh, any type of limit that a plan could have relative to um, plan, plan maxes lifetime max we used to see plans with a million two million right. those were taken away they're all unlimited and at that time everybody was fantastic I cannot I, I cannot outlive how much my health insurance is going to cover, which is a wonderful thing. But in the same token, you have the other side, where all of a sudden people are going, well, they can't limit what they pay. And so you see, especially it's obvious in the prescription drugs that I don't think uh, the highest cost drug that I saw so far is a $1.2 million drug. And you know, prior to 2010, there's no way that has that price tag because a lot of plans have that much to pay. Um, but we've seen that now, um, and it's a response to the ACA, and I think what we're doing is trying to control that as best we can. That concept works great until you run out of other people's money. Yeah. Um, it, so Gordon, I, I was the one that uh, requested this item uh, at a previous meeting, and uh, one of the uh, things that I didn't see included in the report was a comparison to projection. So this board made a decision uh, to select MPR, MPRX or however you pronounce it um, based upon projections uh, and we cho we did not choose other companies uh, because of that and I would just like to compare actual costs or projected uh, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry actual costs or experience to what the, the projections were based on that time to kind of check what our yeah. decision uh, making was. We'll, we'll, we'll come back we'll, we'll come back and we'll do um, give you a full report and that report will, first of all, include year over year, 17 to 18, and it'll be for the first six months. And then we'll look 18 to what was projected, 
Okay. And then also show you what's projected for 19. Okay. Just so that you have an overall view of where we believe things are going and from there um, make a determination. And we'll have some comments relative to it because based on the increased specialty drug yeah. utilization. It kind of throws everything off. It, it throws a monkey wrench in but, there. But, but I'm still curious to see those numbers. Definitely. We'll, we'll provide that in, in full detail to you. And you said you were going to provide that the October meeting? Yes, because there it's going to be more meaningful, right. too, because we'll have two quarters of utilization data where right now I'm giving you data from January to March. Chairman, I did a question. You do show on uh, one of your slides uh, on page 7 that the clinical savings guarantee was $1.8 million. Yes. That the estimated clinical savings as of March 31 was one one. Was that just for that quarter or was that projected out for the full year? Uh, so the 1.8 is the full floor year. for the full year. The 1.1 right. is just the first quarter. Okay. So there it tells you right there we're doing well. Well, I, I, I just want to see the contract right. yeah. and all the different vendors. It's a very fair request and we'll bring that back. Okay. Thank you. Can I make a request in that regard? There's a number of potential um, savings opportunities that you always run up on the issue of member disruption. You know, if you do this, members have to jump through more hoops to, to, to get their prescriptions. And that's always a difficult decision and one that I don't really think staff wants resting. We'd like you to know about those and say, you know, if we did certain options, it could provide additional savings, but there's a give and take on how much we want to do that. That might be another component. Yeah, and I think that's an important point, but I mean, I would rather have somebody jump through a lot of hoops if their drug costs $1.1 million, but... That's just my perspective. Well, and to that end also, I mean, when you're looking, you look, if you look at our, um, our own record as compared to, to, let's say, you know, some sort of national average, and if we're really high, then I, you know, then we, it'd be appropriate for us to make people jump through more hoops because, I mean, we need to get into, we need to get in line with everybody else. We should, if we're way above everybody else, then, then we need to do more. And, the, and, the, and, the, and our employees down need to understand you know, this cost is just a reflection of what you're spending. And if we can do more to keep this cost down, that keeps your premiums down. And so it's, it's, it all works together. But, I mean, we, we can't – if it makes people uncomfortable, I'm sorry. But if, if, but if your rates are if – if they're over and above, way above the national averages, then we, it, it requires us to take action. That, that's being good stewards. So. Well, and another comment just on the um, generic drugs and, and some of the specialty drug use uh, increasing – uh, or being prescribed by doctors. One comment that I would have is where there is a, uh, a generic alternative if um, a name brand prescription is being prescribed that the doctor give justification for that. And yeah. many times there are there is justification. Maybe there's, uh, you know, the, the patient has uh, uh, some type of allergy to the generic, but to right. the uh, to the name brand drug, it's the only one that's going to work. But just require that the doctor provide that explanation, so it gives us some justification for paying that higher cost. Thank you. We do have a high generic utilization. It actually went up about a point so far this year. Um, so uh, um, we will continue on, on, on that vein. And, and you can see a lot of the clinical savings are like, you know, you're prov prescribing a specialty drug off the bat. and. Here's a generic that you should try. The, I think one of the big ones is, uh, you know, diabetes medication is quite prevalent in, in the media. And, uh, you know, metformin, the generic, is kind of the first line of defense. And um, I think sometimes when we see new users, the doctor's still giving them a specialty drug when there should be either a step therapy or uh, a promotion of the generic at first. So Maybe the drug company bought the uh, doctor a bunch of lunches. So <laughs> there are pharmaceutical sales in this area that I know, as with the rest of the state. So beware uh, of drug pushers. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll also be uh, <laughs> in conjunction with the October meeting, um, and we do have uh, uh, in the audience today uh, Empirix as well as Keenan's Pharmacy Division representation. So we'll be. I've already made the request for them to give us their recommendations as to how everything was implemented based off of, you know, not causing too much disruption uh, to the membership to what recommendations they would have, how that would perhaps even impact those existing members. I'm hoping that number's close to zero, um, but come back with some recommendations as well too that we can look. And that 
that we don't have to do it on a renewal. We could still look to do something like that for a 1-1. One, one. Okay. That it for 15? Okay, so go ahead and move to 16. All right. So um, item 16 is the experience report. And um, we're, after the month of June closed, we're sitting just over $3 million, um, in a, in a, in a uh, res, uh, reserve position. Um, there's, uh, when we re initially received the June data, we noticed that a part of the report was really light. Um, and it, if you recall back in when I gave at the last board meeting when I gave the May report, I showed you a three point four million dollar or just under three point four million. June was a six hundred thousand dollars or just below that a surplus month. So three point four plus six does not equal three; it equals four million. Um, but we noticed that in the reporting that the um, reports that we received from Anthem didn't look right on specifically the high deductible health plan, County of Fresno, that claims were that low. So when we uh, inquired, it turns out that several uh, groupings within the high deductible health plan were excluded. And those exclusions, we did an audit on the experience reports all the way back to uh, January 1st of 2016 to see if there were any other uh, understatements of claims. Um, through June 30th of 2017, uh, everything was fine. Starting July of 2017 through uh, May of 2018, the high deductible health plan for County of Fresno had been understated. Um, and there's a report in this experience report that shows the reconciliation. The total amount was about $965,000, of which 900,000 really occurred uh, from January 1 uh, through May of this year as being understated. So with that, um, we have to accept that those claims occurred. And so there's a restatement of, or a correct statement of past months in the June reports that we gave you. Now, Board, and a quick question. Sure. So individuals in Fresno who have the high deductible health plan are relatively low. So this tells me that there were major events that took place with that small grouping of individuals that have that high deductible high deductible health plan is that correct yeah there was a there was definitely some large claim activity not that didn't exceed the uh reinsurance okay. threshold but um did have a significant impact for instance on the restatement march of uh, 2018 shows a significant deficit position specifically um, so last month when I presented the preliminary renewals, it was based off of understating the high deductible health plan by uh, just under a million dollars. Uh, the final renewal that you have before you takes all that into consideration. Uh, but if you also look at it from the perspective of um, a high deductible health plan, the PPO came in at a negative renewal in minus 20 something. Well, it wasn't minus 20, it was more like minus 17. So net net, it, the renewal of a renewal didn't really have an impact, but obviously we have to disclose to you the uh, updated and corrected claims data. What would be the strategy uh, from the uh, health provider in this case to withhold or not be aware of um, the actual activity that took place? It kind of seems unusual for us to have to do the investigating. Yeah. So are they, um, I mean, by doing that, does it, uh, uh, because they weren't underpaid. We paid them, but were they trying to, in some way, was some of those costs buried? Definitely in the not. the EPO? The, to, to, to the best of what I can tell, and we do have Anthem here today as well, um, if, if you'd like to ask any questions of them. But um, uh, to me, somehow, some group numbers got switched off once in June, uh, or at, at, after the month of June 2017 uh, was closed. And then because it was 
less than $100,000 over six months and then almost 900000 over the next five months, I got to believe that some other group numbers that accumulate into that report got switched off as well on January 1 of this year. So I, I don't think there was anything underhanded or relative to Anthem's behavior. It was a mistake that was made and has now been corrected. Okay. So on an overall basis, we're at a little over three million. In a later agenda item, I'm, I'm going to give you an update as to where we are relative to what we thought, where we thought we'd be. That three million is actually ahead of schedule relative to where we thought we would be. So, would have rather had four though. Any questions on the experience reports? Anybody want to, okay. No questions. Okay. You ready for the next item? Mm. Yes. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> All right, item 17 uh, will be short and sweet. Uh, once a year, we like to give an actuarial certification of where the IBNR should be. The first time we did it, we did it with a January 1, 2000, uh, or I'm sorry, December 31st, 2016 <coughs> value, uh, valuation date. Uh, and that's because we came on in March of that year and we wanted to give you kind of actuarially where we felt the IBNR reserve should be. In discussion with you having a, a fiscal year that ends June 30th um, and in working with your auditor's department to make sure we understand where IBNR is and so forth, it just seemed prudent to not do the, cert, uh, the actuarial certification for a December 30th date, which just represents the close of the plan year, but rather have it align so that you have a letter that's actuarially certified for June 30th that says what that reserve should be. So these are the updated uh, reserves for both the County of uh, Tulare and for the County of Fresno. For the uh, City of Marysville, which is the third entity, they're too small to do an actuarial certification, but there is uh, a request to reserve approximately $130,000 relative to IBNR. I will say this, that the these IBNR uh, certified numbers are what we used in the basis of the 2019 renewal in the final renewal uh, because we had them available. Okay, we're ready to go to 18. Um, this is an update on our IBNR and reserve stabilization uh, reserves. Um, and so, uh, I'm actually going to use this one, uh, page two. Page two shows the 2018 uh, funding requirements as were previously shown. That number in the bottom, uh, on that top box, that to the bottom right corner of 20,792,000 should look familiar to you. And then uh, we look at what's required for 2019. So it takes into consideration the 2019 renewal. Um, you can see that loan repayment has not been changed. Um, based off the auditor's report today, I do know that my interest number is only through March of this year. So we'll give an, an updated interest uh, number on the loan repayment um, through the end of this year, um, or at the end of this year. Um, the required IBNR from 18 to 19 went up from 5.7 million to 5.8 million, a $98,000 difference. So that's an in increased liability that we would have, or that the plan would have. And then the required stabilization, if you recall, we're trying to reserve one month of claim activity. And so um, obviously the projection for claims went up, therefore, the amount that we have to reserve in stabilization, it goes up as well too. That'll happen on an annualized basis as we do the renewal, or it'll adjust, I should say. It won't necessarily go up, but it will adjust. And so that adjusted to the tune of about $384,000. So that at this point, the calculation 
that would show is that it went from 20, well, to call 20.8 million to 21.3 million, roughly, um, from that. I did want to share also uh, the final page of this report with you because I think it sh sh shows some um, good news. If I know how to use this, I just clicked it. That didn't do anything. <laughs> just go to page five. Oh, okay, like that. Um, this is a new exhibit. No. Sorry, page four. Uh, page four, this longer one with print. What I thought important is to give you a budget of how we're accumulating. So this is based off of <coughs> renewal decisions and so forth, and then show you how we're actually doing. So I have 2018, and I show actuals, um, which obviously the auditor would, would need to validate as well too, but based off of what we were looking at, the experience reports and so forth, um, the 2018 budget we show that medical plan experience, we included uh, a, st a stabilization reserve buildup in there um, and, and a component for IBNR. On the year, we were trying to get to $2.8 million, $2,881,000. Well, through six months, we're at $3,012,000. And we still have six months to go. I haven't seen June, July's report yet, but I hear that's not a good one. <laughs> But, you know, things go up, things go down, and hopefully we'll head in the right direction. So we have an opportunity, uh, depending on how claims fall, to really build and surpass what was actually budgeted on the year. Uh, we uh, are anticipating the, from the Kaiser rate surcharge that we have in place, about 1.1 million. So far we're at five, uh, 577,000, and that's just automatically built into the rates. So that will continue, and there's nothing going to stop that. So we'll hit that target as well, too. As well as, um, let's see, uh, well, we took the Delta, Delta Dental premium holiday of 362. That was a transfer from their premium stabilization reserve that, we occurred, that occurred in January. We don't anticipate another one during the course of the year. And then there's the 2% on the uh, Delta dental rate. That's the subsidy that we're taking out of the PSR as well, too. Um, which that won't change as well too. So the rest of the monies on the, other than the medical ex plan experience, those are pretty much coming in uh, as uh, the entities pay their premiums. We'll be collecting those. So we will be uh, well ahead of target for um, 2018. And then for 2019, you can see uh, we'll still have the plan experience where I'm showing you what IBNR and stabilization combined, what we have built in, it's roughly about 273,000 a month is what we anticipate, coming up to a, a total on the year of 3.2. Um, Kaiser, we are recommending uh, that there be a rate surcharge entered there as well again in the renewal. That'll be 719,000. And then the run out of the Delta Dental PSR, if you, this board decides to move to a self-funded, environment will realize a transfer of the uh, Delta Dental PSR, uh, and that's about $655,000. So hopefully by the end of, the, uh, end of 2019, <coughs> we will be sitting, you know, basically uh, around four, four, well, $8.6 million towards the $21 million position that we're trying to fund. So. Are you going to go over uh, page five? Yeah, page five um, is, has been in other reports as well, too. Um, and this is, this shows the, um, from inception through the end of 2017, we'll update for 2018 once the year closes, or unless you want to see a mid-year adjustment. Yeah, but the, the intent was to, to and, and what it is is to kind of go back to inception, uh, to see, okay, where where the money flow and so on and so forth. Um, so relative to uh, the the position that we have right now, uh, 
as you can see, um, the and I would just focus on the bottom line. The the 2010 through 2017 shows here's premium we collected, here's the total cost of the plan, and then there's a lot of adjustments. Those uh, adjustments include the HMO year end accounting, uh, where we get re where we get either most likely we receive uh, refunds. So you have to add that to the equation. Prescription drug rebates, um, and so we subtitled that. And then again, uh, keep in mind that the all other uh, deficit position, which I will tell you is predominantly from the county of Sutter, um, that needs to be reallocated among the three entities that, that are still there because we can't go back after them. So the, the, uh, the second to bottom line where it says AO reallocation, that's the all other reallocation of uh, 2179000 and that would be 1.2 to County of Fresno, County of Tulare, 858000 and 52000 to the City of Marysville. Um, so uh, that brings us to a total position of where I see that uh, the plan is in a, the, the SJVA is in an overall deficit position of 7232000 and uh, you see there the different buckets, County of Fresno at 7.6 to the negative, County of Tulare at 422,000 to the positive, and all other uh, 52,000 to the negative as well. This does not include, um, the only additional liability that it wouldn't include is the IBNR. So it doesn't necessarily say that IBNR is funded for, for all entities as well. This is just a historical perspective of basically all the costs, all the adjustments versus the premium. Yeah, I, I just found this chart to be very helpful. Uh, shows since inception and uh, various strategies that were undertaken by this, this board through guidance of different individuals. And uh, it's pretty clear that the uh, adding of entities as we did in our history wasn't the smartest thing in the world as that uh, ended up being a loser for us and costing us uh, quite a bit of money. But uh, at the same time, I think that this also shows uh, as well as we look to build uh, IBNR or build uh, reserves um, and, and how we allocate uh, the percentages that are going to be added to uh, respective entities, I think that we need to be considerate of these numbers uh, and making sure that we distribute fairly as we go forward. I would agree with that. Thanks. So I, I think overall, very positive news relative to um, this plan year and what if recommendations are followed for the following plan year relative to the uh, uh, position that we're taking on. And I think most importantly, um, I, in my opinion, I don't think we've overburdened any of the employee populations over the, these, this year nor no. next year. I mean, individuals will disagree with me relative to those that are covered under the plan, but on an overall basis for the betterment of the SJVA and its membership, I feel we've been prudent yeah. without being overburdened. Ready to move to 19 then? Mm-hmm. I am. All right. So uh, this is the 2019 renewal. Uh, that uh, is the, considered the final renewal. The uh, board asked me to come back with various different options, which we have. Um, there is a staff recommendation, and then there's uh, an adjustment as well that um, merits some discussion. Uh, so uh, I'll start with the medical plan uh, in that uh, the board, well, there were uh, four options that were identified to come back with. One was just what does, what does the underwriting, pure and simple by itself, merit? So we came back with that option. Uh, two, because there were negative amounts in that pure underwriting, what if we took those negative amounts and made them at zero like you had done? Uh, last year as well, too. Uh, then three was, uh, what if we go ahead and uh, still anything that's negative, we put to zero 
but yet uh, because that predominantly impacted the city of Marysville and the county of Fresno, rather than simply increasing the total renewal for the county of Fresno, offsetting the negative, uh, for, uh, which was in the PPO in the high deductible health plan, offset when we move it to zero to the EPO plan and bringing that down. And then finally, the fourth one was not only offsetting, but have a common renewal for the EPO and the high deductible health plan and the PPO for the county of Fresno. And for the city of Marysville, rather than passing on a zero, do the average for the entire group. And the only reason I say that, their experience is not credible at all. Um, and uh, the, I would say if there was even one large claim that would have hit even 200,000 for the city of Marysville, not even the reinsurance level, the renewal would look substantially different. Um, and most likely they'd be looking for an exiting strategy. And so uh, even a zero I don't think would be fair given the circumstance, but the overall average for what the self-funded program is, I felt was very fair. And so the recommendation there was that, and that's option four, and that's what was uh, requested. In the executive summary, uh, what we've done here is we've shown you option four and then let me uh, discuss Kaiser. If you recall last year, we were put in a position where uh, Kaiser uh, gave us a negative renewal increases. And this board prudently said, we'll take that, but we're going to keep the SJVI rates at zero so that we could, and that's what built that $1.1 million reserve this year, or is building. Um, so uh, this year, after uh, further uh, negotiations um, with Kaiser, uh, the renewal came in at about a 4.8%. It varied among the entities slightly, but brought the um, county of Fresno to a uh, plus 0.7%, uh, so less than 1% increase from what the members had seen before from zero. And it... Uh, uh, held the county of Tulare uh, still in a negative position at less than a, less than one percent negative, and uh, also the same was pretty much true for the county of or the city of Marysville. Uh, but that excluded any type of margin. Uh, Keenan, in conjunction with staff, had discussion relative to do we continue to put a margin application on Kaiser to build back. Um, the reserves that are so desperately needed. And uh, we showed a variety of different scenarios with loads between what was before $10. A $10 surcharge is equivalent to about 1.1% load. And then we showed zero all the way to 5% in 1% increments. And the decision based off where the, the Anthem plans were falling relative to their renewals, the decision was made uh, to recommend a 3% load to the Kaiser. So that's where you get to 3.07 for Kaiser, uh, for County of Fresno, 2.18 uh, for the County of Tulare, and uh, 2.95 for the City of Marysville. On the uh, dental, on a fully insured basis, you're, you're going to be in the second year of a two-year rate guarantee, so there's no changes in the rates. However, the recommendation is not to accept a fully insured option. Past discussions with this board, I've explained that they're holding a PSR, which they've transferred some funds back. We believe there'll be a six to $700,000 left in that. Technically con and contractually, that's Delta Dental's money. So anytime there's excess at the end of the year, they keep it, it's theirs. Um, they've agreed uh, if we sell fund because um, one, I, I met with them, negotiated with them. They're very mindful relative to the overall position. They said, if you self-fund, what we will do is we will take that PSR reserve, and rather than you paying claims out of it, we will pay the ourselves the claims until that uh, PSR fund is basically uh, 
goes down to zero value. And then at that point, you would start. And so what that would mean was be a transfer of the PSR from Delta Dental to, uh, to uh, the SJVIA. So the recommendation, and we would not adjust the rates, we would keep them at zero. Um, the recommendation is that we do move to a self-funded program on that. We will be building IVNR in that program. Um, there is stabilization built into it too. Um, so we would look uh, to uh, basically self-fund it so that we could transfer that money over. And that was part of the, if you remember from the budget for next year, that was included in there as well too. The vision is on a fully insured basis and the vision uh, is also in a rate guarantee. So we don't recommend self-funding the, the vision uh, simply because the advantage of doing it is, is so minor um, it, that it's just simply not worth it. If we saw a significant rate adjustment, we, we could perhaps uh, validate that, but not at this point. So the recommendation is to uh, go with a 0% uh, and stay fully insured there. Those are what the um, renewal recommendations uh, coming out of, coming from the staff were. In <clears throat> and then there's one adjustment uh, and request from the County of Fresno, and that is relative, in, and there's, there's no documentation relative to it, but I, I'll draw your attention to this, to the, the first two line items under the County of Fresno. Um, passing on a 3% increase on Kaiser and uh, basically more than 3% higher to the self-funded plan widens the gap on the contribution side to the point where migration would be entered into where people would leave the self-funded plans, predominantly the EPO plan, and move and migrate towards Kaiser. We've seen a significant shift to the point where I believe uh, four or five years ago, Kaiser had, I, I don't have that in front of me, but I think it's like four or five percent. Yeah had a 5% participation, and now they're up to 35% prior to the 2019 renewal. Um, I know that one of the things that I will be doing a study, because there's, there's been a lot of talk, Kaiser's taking on the best risk. If you talk to Kaiser, Kaiser says, no, our risk is no different than yours on the self-funded plan. So we will be doing a study comparing the self-funded plan compared to the Kaiser for the SJVA, just to make sure that we know exactly is the better risk going there or is it indifferent or what the situation is. Uh, but the request uh, has been made to avoid further migration to the Kaiser plan um, by uh, doing a common renewal increase uh, to, for the county of Fresno. And what that means is basically if you add for 2018, the first two lines together, 2019, the first two lines together, what is the common percentage difference from 18 to 19? And it works out to be 5.5%. Um, and so that is a, a further consideration that the County of Fresno uh, would like this board to consider as well. And this all came up really this week when we, when we gave into consideration what 3.07 and 6.54 could potentially mean relative to migration. Is that a responsible thing to do though? To I mean, has that been fully analyzed? Uh, I mean, it just came up this week and this here it's put before the board and it's not even been in our material. Uh, right. I, I mean, I don't want to speak on behalf of Fresno County, but uh, I just want to make sure that's a fully analyzed uh, scenario before uh, this board goes and votes for it. I think our council has some concerns uh, dealing with it. So. I, would, I would like to weigh in and um, advise that I just became aware of this last night at 4.30 um, when Mr. Nerland called and reported that um, this request was going to be made. Um, we have not received any um, written data that would show the impact so that we could make a prudent decision in terms of whether there is financial impacts um, and uh, we would request that we would have time that the entire SJBIA staff, professional staff and legal counsel and our auditors would have the time to review that information prior to making any 
action or decision today on that matter. Well, Rhonda, would you be comfortable with it if uh, the, this board made a, a decision today, but we uh, also included in that motion that there would be no impact? Because obviously this board has made clear that we want to make sure that Tulare and Fresno counties and other members pay their own ways to the fullest uh, extent possible. So if, if, that, if we did choose to move and that was part of the motion, would that provide you with enough comfort? Or are you... Because the, my concern is that the longer we wait, it could uh, cause some challenges for us. I know we're already looking at um, having some special meetings at some point later on this year. And I would imagine that, Paul, you need to answer this question. You would like to have a decision on this or flexibility sooner rather than later. And furthermore, when did you find out about, uh, about this even being a possibility? I found out about this last night after at 4.30. And unfortunately... We had our health plan advisory group yesterday, so we were not able to take any of this information and share it with our health plan advisory group as well. And what I'm hearing from you, Rhonda, is your, your greatest concern is that somehow it's going to negatively impact uh, Tulare County, which is not what Fresno County wants. So if there's a way that we can incorporate that into a motion, would you be supportive of it? I would not want to see a uh, negative impact, but I also believe that this is part of due diligence and um, prudent practices that we have the information to review um, as the SJVIA um, and that we do this together, um, which is what the SJVIA was formed um, and what benefits everyone in the SJVIA. That's the part I'm having a hard time understanding, quite frankly. And go ahead, Council, weigh in. What is the issue? We have a, a balanced plan at 3%. If Fresno County, to our uh, own plan, wants to increase that by 2%, it's simply going to strengthen the bottom line and add to what we've already been doing this year. So I'm sitting here, quite frankly, amazed as what is the issue when the plan balances at 3 and we're going to add two more to that to strengthen it, What's, what's the problem? The is that the um, SJVIA has not done their due diligence on this. Uh, how, 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 can, how do you say that when it's already done its due diligence and came out at 3%? So to raise that, it's only going to increase and add to the benefit, not detract in any way. So how can you make that statement? For the past number of months when this has all been discussed in the preliminary rate renewals, uh, this has never been brought up once. Never but it only comes well, up the day before, which is why. We just, we just knew about it this, this week, though. It's in the best interest of you as board members to do your due diligence, since you are the board members of this agency, to then table this and then take a special meeting later. So that way you could actually make an informed decision. And, and I don't want to table the entire rate renewal no. because you take in another month of plan experience, no, and I, that I, one other month of plan experience is going to uh, could could potentially affect yeah. this in a, a very negative way. I, well, if I can speak to that, I, I haven't spoken yet. Um, how did this come up? What's the history and what is the due diligence? I, just to make sure we have the whole story. Um, I think it should have come up sooner. Um, i like to give credit to Hollis McGill, who's the benefits manager at Fresno County, for raising the issue. As this board recalls, in March of 2016, we hired Aon. We asked them to do a study of what our practices had been and what they recommended. They gave us a report and they, they raised this issue. This issue was we're seeing a migration from the Kaiser plants. They were concerned and at that time the migration was not nearly what it is today. And so, you know, frankly I wish it would come up. How did it come up? Hollis took the proposed rates that had been calculated for today's meeting and indicated how will this impact Fresno County. In looking at that, the rates between the employee-only plan for Kaiser and the employee-only plan for the EPO would be about a $30 difference. So we're now increasing the difference. So we, last year we had about 200 more without any more difference. <coughs> we left the self-funded risk pool that we oversee here and moved to the Kaiser plan. So the, the AON report, Keenan, when they were hired, recommended this. Frankly, it should have come up sooner, but it's prudent I mean, to, to ignore it uh, is not an option, and I strongly recommend against. This is prudent action. It's action that considers what's been happening 
keep in mind that of those that left the self-insured pool and went to Kaiser, they contributed to the very deficits that we are now recovering. So that pool is, is also contributing to paying that back by increasing that margin by, t by two and a half percent more. So the, the, the premium to the SJVIA is the same. So to say there's been no due diligence, to say this hasn't been considered is not accurate. And you know, with respect to counsel, I, I say this with respect, I think our consultant and our underwriters are the ones who, who give us the, the advice as to what our rate should be and, and how we should do this. Frankly, I, I would like this to, to come up sooner. With all due what respect, is the procedurally, Excuse me. Just quick, procedurally, if we were to move forward with this today, when would it go into effect? This is for plan year 2019. So this would be in the open enrollment rates that we would be going back to the County of Fresno Board in September. So I guess I'm, I'm wondering in theory, if we were to move forward with this today, is it irreversible if we were to find out through enhanced due diligence uh, for us to undo uh, this, uh, uh, <coughs> this movement uh, in time to, uh, uh, to reverse course? No, we would have to have a, a special meeting of this board to. I mean, the next, when is the next meeting? October. Well, that's October. to be determined, but uh, right. in, in October. October. Let's, so. assume, let's assume, if we were to move forward today and then we were to find out that there was a rock that wasn't turned over to someone's detriment, although no one here can contemplate how that might actually exist, could we recover and undo what would be done? We would have to have a special meeting of this board. In October. Probably sooner than October. Because I think to Larry's you'd open, to, you'd have to do it, open it would need yeah, to be early September, probably. So, and, and, and real quick, first of all, I just want to give a compliment. I really do appreciate the senatorial vocabulary over there. I mean, it's kind of interesting to hear how senators speak. It kind of raises the bar at the uh, SJVI and at the Board of Supervisors. Um, but that being said, uh, I have no issue with uh, allowing the County of Fresno to do what they uh, see prudent and that's going to. Uh, further enhance the premium contribution and reduce the migration of, call it the good lives, over to uh, a, a pool that isn't necessarily uh, funding as much. But, but what, one of my bigger concerns is, is comparing on, on page five, um, the EPO to um, the high deductible health plan in Fresno County. Um, you know, we created this EPO uh, this year, I, I believe, right? It was this year or was it last year? Yes. I don't remember. Yeah, this year. Um, and, and this was supposed to be, you know, a, uh, I don't know, a, a call it a, a hybrid between an HMO and a Just PPO type, it, yeah. type, type thing. Um, and it was supposed to be, you know, really a, a, a saver. Well, clearly it's a 12% cost driver. Um, and, and then that's being offset with your high deductible health plan folks who uh, appeared to have a, a pretty healthy year. Um, and, and so the, the balance there it isn't really uh, fairly allocated, I don't think, but it really brings up the question as to, should we even continue this EPO option? Have you done a thorough evaluation of that? Um, and, and was this smart to even create in the first place? So I, I just say that, that really kind of, that question's in my mind. I can, I can address that issue. Um, relative to the EPO, first of all, we underwrite off of 12 months. We only have six months of yeah. EPO experience. So we had to take the HMO, the experience there, and do some conversions and be very conservative with those conversions. So we really don't have 12 months. We, uh, if you were to ask me, do we have credible or I'm saying our costs are coming in 12% higher next year. I, I don't have full okay. faith in that number. We need 12 months of EPO experience. And at that point, when we underwrite it, and it says 12% increase, then yeah, uh, we missed the mark. Good point, thank you. And I, did, I did want to also just real quick um, make a comment to the EPO relative to, for 2018, we show a very small reserve buildup, but keep in mind that it went into effect December 18th um, of 2017, and we had a eight, over an $800,000 buildup th there. So when you look at the experience reports and so forth, 
it really makes more sense to look at since inception. And there you see it's actually over a million dollars uh, to the good. It's just that part of that we're counting in 17 still. It's true. Uh, I, I was going to say that um, it, it seems like it's prudent what the County of Fresno is recommending to do here. And it seemed like it would be beneficial to the entire uh, organization because again, it's not just about whether or not they're healthy family, healthy people leaving go to the uh, to Kaiser. It's just that the numbers going because again, we look to the numbers to help repay back the debt that we incurred for these employees over time. So stemming that flow is beneficial to the organization. I realize it's not uh, this is not the best way to do something, uh, and it would be better to have had done uh, spent more time and 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 been able to advertise the, the change that you were going to do so that the employees would know about it and so forth and so on. But if there's no legal, if we're not violating any of our own policies or laws to do this, I, I would certainly support Fresno County's position uh, to, to move forward with this. Uh, so, I mean, I've, I've heard council say that there's concern about uh, due diligence and, and it would have been nice if we had spent more time reviewing this and analyzing it and so forth. But I, I'm prepared to go today unless, you're, unless there's some uh, hard and fast reason why we're not able to do it today. And I haven't heard anything to that end as of well, and I, I think even from a logistical standpoint, even if theoretically we wanted to, to delay this issue, I don't know that we would be able to meet in the time frame to even do that. I mean, so, I mean, it's really, I mean, I, I think the decision needs to be made today. And I, I'm, uh, I think I've heard enough where I, I feel uh, comfortable with supporting uh, Fresno County's position. Uh, could I ask the consultant to weigh in on has this been flown, this latest option flown to Kaiser? Because obviously Kaiser has to agree and be willing um, to agree to our proposal. Um, thank you, Rhonda. Uh, yes, that's, uh, it's, been, it's been a fast-paced week uh, for myself. Uh, Tuesday uh, in the afternoon, it was presented to Kaiser. Um, I heard back from Kaiser with an acceptance that they would uh, be willing to do that on Wednesday evening. Um, so they've agreed to the 5.5. To the uh, point of clarification, even though Kaiser's going up, um, the self-funded plan comes down, so it's a wash, so there's no greater revenue coming uh, to the SJBA as well. Thank you. Where do we go from here? Do we need a separate motion for uh, for that? We need a motion uh, explaining which plans or which renewal percentages you're going to select. If you'd like, I can review the renewal recommendation from staff with the discussion that we just had for County of Fresno. And uh, I'll, I'll stick to this chart here. So. For the County of Fresno, uh, the recommendation is that Anthem and Kaiser receive a common renewal increase at 5.5%. That uh, Kaiser uh, be, uh, I'm sorry, and that include a 3% margin relative to the Kaiser rates as well to, too. Um, that the dental uh, remain at the current rates at 2018. However, that we move uh, to a self-funded model um, vision that we accept the renewal at zero. Um, the recommendation for the County of Tulare for dental and vision is the same at zeros and that the Anthem uh, self-funded plan renew at 2.35% and that Kaiser renew at 2.18% also including a 3% margin and that for the City of Marysville that they receive a 4.91% increase on the Anthem plan and Kaiser uh, a 2.95, which also includes 3% margin. So moved. Second. Second by Steve. Any public conversation on this? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, no. Pass unanimously. So real, real, real quick, Borden, um, yeah. just before we uh, continue, what is the, uh, what's the trend this year uh, in the marketplace for uh, health plan increases? Thank curious. you. I'm glad you asked that. Um, typically, 
Self-funded plans target six to eight percent, and the fully insured are typically a little bit higher than that. Usually starts in the eight to ten percent range. So we are staying below trend, and we're at the low end of self-funded plans in general as well, too. Thank you. Thank you, Borden. You make uh, watching paint dry interesting. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that comment. <laughs> and that's a good thing. <laughs> Move to item 20, Rhonda. This is a request from the city of Marysville um, to ask the SJVIA to extend the uh, termination notice from 90 days to 120 days to allow time for Marysville to review our rate action that was just uh, adopted today. We have um, historically allowed non-founding members. Um, we have extended the time frames for them in the past. The staff would be supportive of um, going ahead and extending to 120 days. So moved. Got a motion. Second. Uh, Second. Uh, thanks for seconding that non-controversial item in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Not controversial for me. Public comment. Excuse me. Hi. Um, actually. Reducing it from 120 to 90 days yes, the way is the okay. clarification. Right. We're good. Correct. I'm sorry. No, no, no public comment. Short so time. All the question. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. And now my favorite item: adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> Ten to go.